Yeah, what is going on, everybody? We are back with another episode of From My Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Rob. Man, I love y'all and thank y'all for rocking with your boy. Some things are moving and grooving in my life. Um, I need to play a round of applause for myself. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Rob, why are you playing that round of applause? Well, someone reached out to me today and I will be doing my first, actually I'm lying, I'm doing my second uh, podcast consultation. I have someone who wants to start a podcast and they need help and all of the things. So <clears throat> I had a consultation today and I'm going to be helping that person get on down the road. That will be the second person because the first person is actually a special guest today and we'll get to that in a minute. Those of you who listen and support the show know who that already is. Those of you, if you're new here, you'll find out today. Other than that, man, life has been pretty good. Uh, I've been in my head about a couple things. I miss the dating world. I'm not going to lie. I ain't ready to get back out there yet, but I do miss it. And I've been seeing some thing things in these streets, but I just kept walking because I'm like, bro, stay focused. You got some things you got to take care of first because you know how it is with these women out here. You know how it is. It's time consuming. It's going to take finances and resources and you, you ain't got you ain't got too much to spare right now. So just focus on what you need to focus on. So I'm like, all right, cool. But I am glad that things are just coming together and that I'm rebuilding my life the right way. Now, <laughs> we have a special guest in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special guest. Um, I'm glad that we're still friends because she knew me when I was wild. And <laughs> woo, wild and running the streets of Orangeburg, South Carolina, let me tell you. But she's always been a great friend. She's always set a great example. She is the first person that I worked with to help start a podcast. And now she has her own podcast that's doing great. I love her show. It's at the top of my list every week when it drops. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the host of Frank Factualities, Miss Yolanda. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. I so appreciate you inviting me. This has uh, been one of my uh things on my to-do list I have to come on from my experience <laughs> podcast you know my mentor my end-all be-all the guy at the top of my list thank you so much Rob for having me oh no problem thank you thank you for just being dedicated to the craft of podcasting you know I'm glad that not only did you want to start a podcast you took the necessary steps to do what you needed to do you got over the learning curve which the learning curve isn't bad I've been telling people and here you are today. Yeah. So yeah, the experience was great. You know, I took the time to listen to you and did everything you said. And if I had questions, you answered them for me. And I, I appreciate uh, you just kind of being there. And I love podcasting. It is something that is a uh, work in progress. You learn something new every day. So I'm really grateful for having you be someone to lead me through that. Well, I'm glad I was able to help and I'm glad I was able to get out of my own way. A couple of people have told me that I should help people do this thing. And I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know. But podcasting is blowing up, as you know. Uh, but, you know, one thing that I've learned just from doing this for so long is that everybody don't make it. Everybody doesn't make it, which is why having a strong foundation is important. And choosing your subject matter is highly, highly, highly important, y'all. Like those of you thinking about starting a podcast... You need to think about your schedule, which is like your frequency of when I'm going to record and how many episodes I'm going to put out and what am I going to be talking about? And is this something that I can talk about all of the time? That's why I talk about what I talk about, my life and life in general. So, yeah. No, now that's a struggle, trying to pick a topic and <laughs> trying to stay consistent. But um, that I see why podcasters don't last because you get a little frustrated at times you, depending on what you're going through, you may not feel like talking about anything at that moment, but I think consistency is key. I think that was one of the first things you told me, you know, your audience, you got to, you got to condition them in that you have to make sure that 
you are coming out weekly because you have to build them. So if you're you just got started and you skip a week and it's just like, okay, they moved on to the next. So yep. now when I upload an episode, I do mine kind of late night. And so it rolls over like midnight on that Thursday. I wake up and I see people listen before I even put out like, hey, a new episode is available. That tells me those are my loyal listeners mm -hmm. and they're expecting it to drop when I say it's going to drop. So definitely consistency is key. Absolutely. And y'all, I've gotten... I don't remember how many at this point, but I've gotten interviews because people, companies have emailed me and said, hey, I've heard your show. We have someone we think will be a great guest, you know, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, all right, yeah, dope. And then I always ask, well, how did you hear about me? And they're like, oh, I was just searching podcasts and, you know, I listen to you every week, not just for work, yada, yada, yada. And I'm just like, oh, so that consistency, because when people look and they're looking to get, you know, their clients to work with you and interview with you, they're going to look at your history. So thankfully, you know, I got a ton of episodes. I have a ton of interviews. There's a lot for people to look at and say, OK, is he a good fit or not? So, yeah, consistency is the key for sure. All right. So we are here. <laughs> Wait, before I even get to the topics, tell them about your show. Let's 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 put some shine on you real quick. Tell them about Frank Factualities. So Frank Factualities is pretty much a a Frank uh, kind of straightforward approach to just life situations. I learned that for me talking to people that my experiences in life was kind of unique and people love just hearing my point of view and perspective on things. So I was like, you know what? I need to do a podcast and just talk about all things life. So uh, I couldn't call my show from my experience because it's already taken. <laughs> but that's pretty much what I cover is like things that I've dealt with, just life scenarios from my experience. And I try to be as upfront. And um, but that's where the word Frank comes from, because everybody always asks, what is Frank factualities? It's just my Frank truths about my experiences in life. And I wanted to name it something that I didn't hear. That if you Googled, I would be the only one that came up. You know, I was thinking about branding. And so it has worked for me thus far. But I talk about everything life. Sometimes, as you know, uh, your topics can gear towards relationships more so than anything. But for the most part, I talk about a lot of different things. Uh, I promote uh, you promote positivity. I promote counseling and therapy. I feel like that is number one uh, in making sure that everybody kind of gets their life on track. So uh, if you want to come on over and listen to me. Let's have a little conversation is what I like to say about everything life. Yes. Make sure y'all subscribe to Frank Factualities. I love it. Always interesting stories. That's, that's one thing that I need to get back outside and I need to experience some more things because the stories you tell on your show, I'll be like, Oh, who this? Who that? Who did that? Like you be having the tea, yo. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I got to get back to that. I have so many stories and I'm like, you haven't told a story in a while. I think you just gave me my uh, the new episode for next week. I'm, I'm going to go into a story. <laughs> hey, there y'all go. All right. So make sure you check it out. So we are here, y'all, to discuss tradition. So like old school traditions versus new school traditions. And in particular, we're going to talk about these graduation fiascos, man. So if you haven't been been paying attention uh, over the past few year, few years, clips have been coming out about just people at their graduations on all levels. I've seen it on all levels from elementary school through college. And as of late, there's just been a lot of controversy, a lot of backlash, a lot of a lot of divide. And I, the big divide I see is between the older generation of people. I would consider myself older generation. I'm 38. You know what I'm saying? I graduated college in December of 2009, high school in uh, 2003. So older generation versus the newer generation. The newer generation, y'all are interesting to say the, <laughs> to say the least, man. But uh, what, what's been happening is just we're getting clips not necessarily full videos to give you full context we're getting clips of moments that just make people look unfavorable and so now there's like a big debate going on like oh graduation is too old too stiff let them people celebrate because typically people are celebrating on stage the moment their name is called or on the way to get their diploma and stuff like that and it has caused disruptions and it's caused situations to occur and people are not liking the reactions that these people are getting. 
So we just want to kind of talk about that. And just just to preface this, we're not attacking anyone. And for me, this is not about right versus wrong. This is just one I'm speaking. I'm going to speak from my educator's point of view because I taught for 10 years. Um, Yolanda's in that field as well. So the perspective, our perspective is a bit different because we know how things work behind the curtain. Like a normal everyday person with a normal everyday job, things work quite differently in the education system. Uh, but again, we're not here to condemn anyone or bash anyone. We're just going to give our opinions on what we've seen and what we think. Um, and I'm just going to start with this overview. Typically, graduation is, hey, you show up, everyone uh, pretty much is quiet, calm, and the graduates' names are called. When your name is called, you walk on stage, you get your diploma, your degree, whatever uh, token on stage, you shake the person's hand, you walk off stage. Um, and everything's done in an orderly fashion. There's no ch cheering or clapping, not supposed to be anyway. And part of the reason that that is there is because graduations are long. Like when you have to call hundreds or even in some cases thousands of names, you know, sitting there and listening to even if it's full 500 names, you are sitting there, you know, that's already a long process, right? So when you add in something like a celebration, meaning, hey, if you let one do it, you got to let them all do it. It extends this. It extends the graduation, number one. But number two, it can cause other issues. So I'm going to stop right there. That's the old school way that things are done. And these are the traditional ways. And again, the new school or a newer generation wants to be able to celebrate on stage in front of everyone. So uh, as of late, <laughs> there's four videos. Let me think. Yes, there's four videos that come to mind that I've seen that we'll get into. But uh, would you agree with that that analysis or that synopsis I just gave, Yolanda? Of course. And as you stated, I am currently a school counselor and so I, for the first time on a podcast, can say I, I guess I'm an expert in this and that is what I do. I actually call names for graduation at my school. So wow. when I say I'm on the scene, I'm on the scene. I'm at every practice and I am on the stage during the, cer the celebration as the new school people would do or say. <laughs> but what I've noticed is that old versus new is that we people, not we, because I still have respect, but they've lost kind of respect for just education and educators in general. Yes. And everything has been about a moment for that individual person. And they don't see the whole, uh, the big picture of it all. Mm -hmm. And the, like you said, it's a, it's kind of a production and it's all about self in that moment. And so things have just shifted where it was a dignified event when you, you attended graduation and people dressed up for it. And now people go get shirts made. So you can't order no t-shirts during that time because they, all of the people are busy making graduation t-shirts. So mm -hmm. it's, it's changed from this dignified, we got to dress up and, you know, sit there and just clap to, okay, cameras have to be out. We're going to bring our fans and t-shirts and everything, posters, scream uh, bullhorns and bells and scream as if we're at a football game. And that's the shift in what's happened. So I totally agree with, with, with what you're saying. Now, just to give you another full warning, my language may get a little spicy because I may get passionate about this. Oh, so I, I just... am passionate. Mine <laughs> <is spicy. laughs> of course. So with that, one... Part of that part of that actually pisses me off because where was this energy during the school year when you weren't answering emails, you weren't showing up to conferences and your child needed the support when I was staying after school with them, when I was making sure that, you know, they got their work done and stuff like that. And I talked to you once a year, twice the entire school year. But when it's time for graduation, you want to take all, take out all the stops and just do everything. Where's where's that energy? And that's what has me upset. Everybody wants to celebrate, but where were you when the work was being done? And like you said, everyone keeps saying at these graduations, it's my moment. Unf you have a quick, brief moment. I'll give you that. But the the celebration or the the ceremony is not just about you. And it's not just about the students. That's the other thing. Faculty, staff, everyone in that building bust their ass all year. You didn't do it by yourself. 
Like, we were the ones grading papers. We were the ones staying after school. We were the ones making sure you didn't get suspended. We were the ones communicating with your parents saying, hey, they're struggling. We were the ones coming up with lesson plans. Like, it wasn't just about you. And also, for some of us, that's the last time we're going to see you. We're going to see some of these students we poured into walk across the stage and we get to see you move on to the next. So I get it. We are celebrating the fact that y'all have made it through, but it's not just about you because people helped you get there. The majority of us, a majority of the students, you had a lot of help getting there. So that's something you have to think about as well. Yeah, it's like during the school year, every well, I'm going to see this a little different. As we said, it's going to get a little spicy, but I am too also a parent. What I can say is that I don't put a lot of emphasis on a high school diploma, so I'm a little biased in that. Me you know, no disrespect. And I, ain't got kids. I feel like that's the bare minimum. It's what you're supposed to do. So when I hear people trying to justify the kids, oh, they earned that. You know, they worked hard for it. Not really. You really didn't. <laughs> no shade. You really didn't. And it's what you're supposed to do. Parents, you go to jail if you don't send your kids to high school. It's called truancy. So it's not like you know, oh, they you know suffered through COVID. No, that was a breeze for them. They did they did COVID in their bed. That wasn't hard work because they went through COVID. I just feel like the whole idea of they earned, they earned, yes, of course they earned it. But I tell my son and my daughter that that's, that's what you're supposed to do. It's not something that, you know, I got to just scream at the top of my lungs about you doing because you're supposed to stay in school for 12 years. The law says you got to have your child in school from K to 12. It's not like that was optional for them. And they went through something that you know, somebody, nobody else ever before them or after them will do. So I just don't put that much stock into it. And I agree with you when you say that it goes, you know, it's a family and a whole production of people who were involved in that. I can tell you for me, I, I'm friends with the lady who's the graduation coordinator and she kind of does the coordination for everybody in the district. And she's looked at if something in graduation doesn't go right. The principal is always looked at too. So they look at them like, okay, well, there was something that you didn't do right for this production and not go smoothly. So when the kids misbehave, it's a bad reflection on that school and people don't see that. And those schools are like, oh my God, they don't have no control. The kid, you know, they don't, the kids don't listen to them. And it's not that, you know, most of the people that uh, misbehave in graduations are really the parents to be honest with you. The kids, you have a few that may do a little something here and there, but you have a decorum prior to. So when they, when the, the superintendent or the principal steps on the stage, they always say, hey, hold your applause to the end. We have three days of practice prior to the actual graduation. And I can tell you in all of those practices, we say, do not come across the stage at the food, okay? That is stated all the time. So mm -mm. We make kids feel like they don't have to follow rules and restrictions and, and regulations, I'm sorry, because it's their day and they graduated is ridiculous to me because you pay for your airline ticket. But if you break the, the rules of the uh, the the uh, the air, the airline, they're going to kick you off. So why do you think you don't have to follow rules at the school system, the school, any school event? It's going to be school rules, regardless of what it is. And those rules are set. And you don't get to say, well, that's not fair when you knew the rules up front and you chose to break the rules. Those kids know what the rules are. They're choosing to do that. And they assume because, oh, it's the final day, they're not going to do anything. And then the minute they do it, it's like, oh, I want to go to the news. And it's like, come on now. We didn't really tell you that. Like that happened at our school. The boy, You know, we uh -oh. had a student who did it. We did. We had a student who did it and he went locally viral. I guess we can, that's a thing, right? So like mm. everybody in our city saw it. And then I saw some backlash because our principal had the student to just write like a, he held a diploma and he had the kid write like an essay as to like why he, you know, he thought that it was probably something he should not have done. And of course the principal got backlash from it as all of them have been getting, like, why would you hold the child's diploma? And with that being said, I think, um, I commented on your page about that. You don't, the diploma, i.e. the certificate is wall art. Okay, let mm. me just say that. <laughs> that is wall art. That's not what you earned. You earned your transcript. It's like the transcript is what confirms that you graduated. That's what people are going to use to verify graduation, right? I know a, a lady around the corner that'll print me out a diploma for $40. You get what I'm saying? Those documents mm -hmm. are that that is nothing. So when they make such a big fuss about, oh, I need to get my diploma, I'm just like, 
sweetheart, you could just order a duplicate off of the State Department of Education's website. Like for you to go call the news because the school held it is really not that big of a deal. You literally can order one that same day and say, hey, I lost it. I need a duplicate because, you know, that do happen. People do lose things. You could just get another one. And if you're going to college, you are a college student. I'm a college student. When you apply to go to school, they ask you to send them a copy of your transcript. Nowhere in the history has anybody ever said, let me get a copy of that big ass diploma that they gave you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody is scanning that and sending it over. So to make such a big fuss about wall art to me is ridiculous. But I know I'm biased because, again, I see it from the back end and not necessarily from the parents. But I think that it's important as parents and the community to understand how the education system is ran. And then you won't get your panties in a bunch sometimes about things that I feel like you shouldn't. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I agree wholeheartedly. Um and as far as situations, so there was one, there was a uh, graduation at Girls High in Philadelphia where actually two young ladies did not get their diplomas. One, uh, she waved while she was walking by um, to pick before she got her diploma, her diploma and somebody clapped. And the lady said, you made somebody clap. You're not getting your diploma. The girl said she, she was shocked. She didn't make she didn't want to make a scene. So she moved on. Uh, and I don't know which order this came in. I don't know. One of them had to come before the other one. So I'm mm-hmm. assuming you saw, maybe you didn't see, but you, you know, hopefully you didn't see and decide to do it anyway. Another one did, what is this dance called? The giddy, the gritty, the gritty, <laughs> the gritty dance across the stage. And she did not get hers because of course that caused a crowd reaction and people were pissed because of the way that, you know, she guessed, I guess, the principal who was white threw the diploma down or threw it back in the basket. They didn't like her reaction to it. Um, and what I said, <clears throat> what I said about it was in education, it's lose lose. It's lose lose. And every, people were like, oh, that was my child. I'd snatch the, 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 the diploma. I'd do this. I'd do that. She's wrong. One, two, three, four, five, right? I'm like, cool. I get it. You're upset. That's your child. You're a parent. But like, Yolanda just said, one, the ground rules were laid. You decided not to follow the rules. Therefore, there's a consequence for you not following these rules. Sorry, this is the school you chose to go to. And a lot of girls who went to that high school in the comments were saying, I went to that school. They have traditions. They don't play about their graduation. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about these are women my age that went to this school. So... What I said was, y'all might not like her reaction. And in education, you have to understand, we don't prepare for conflict with kids. Like, the expectation is we set the ground rules, we talk about it, we make sure everyone understands. And the expectation is that you follow them. When they don't follow the rules, you got two choices. You can let them slide or you can enforce the consequence. That's really your only two choices. Typically, when you enforce the consequence, somebody's not going to like it. Somebody's feelings going to get hurt, but you broke the rules. When you let them slide, what y'all have to understand is if that principal would have let that child slide, that means she would have lost because every child that came after her, she would have had to let, let celebrate or you run the risk of the parents saying, well, why did this child get to do that and mine didn't, right? And let's say she let them slide and let the rest of the kids celebrate. What about the kids before her who didn't get to celebrate? Why my kid didn't get to celebrate? How come these 20, 30 kids got to celebrate mine? So you lose, like you lose, like you literally lose. But she did what she was supposed to do. If that was the rule you had set in place and there's a consequence, she enforced the consequence. Do I agree with the way she did it? And I mean, I don't know if she was, you know, people were calling her racist and all that. I'm like, yo, this is like a five second clip that I think that's irresponsible to throw that much on it. Cause I'm like, you don't know her history. You don't know her, but I'm like, we are charged with enforcing the rules at school as educators. When we don't, we have all the eyes of our students on us. We cannot be walking contradictions or we will not have respect. Therefore, you will have classroom issues, yada, 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 so on, so forth. So I'm sorry that that happened to those two young ladies, but y'all knew what the rules were and y'all decided to make a choice. Now to another quick point. For those of you who say there should be celebrations, I did 10 seconds. Let's say you give every child 10 seconds. Let's say you have a graduating class of 600. I don't think that's too big. 600 at 10 seconds. That's an hour and 40 minutes. That would be 10 seconds. 
That's an hour and 40 minutes you would add on to graduation. <laughs> Assuming everyone does the time. Shoot, even if you want to say some kid's not going to celebrate, at a minimum, you're going to add an hour. At a minimum. Right? So that's something to think about. Y'all want to let people celebrate. Okay, now you're making graduation longer. And now you got to make rules up about the celebration. What's appropriate? What's not appropriate? You see what I'm saying? So you feel where I'm coming from, Yolanda. I don't want to keep talking. Ooh, so, of course. Yeah. So I saw both of those clips. And you know what? I, I can be a little harsh when it comes to education and gender. <laughs> that's just my nine to five. Same. However... I don't think that the girl, the one, because, you know, two things can exist. Yes. I can think one thing is wrong and one thing is right. So I don't think that the child who, uh, whose parent or whomever clapped in the audience should have been penalized because obviously she can't control that. Right. Even, you know, waving, if that was against the rules, you know, I, I can see that I wouldn't have been upset as a, at a wave. I don't think mm -hmm. that that hindered any, anything. However, I agree with you. If I, if I have to set a standard for one student, obviously we have to follow it. I think the biggest issue is that parents want or think that we as a school uh, are supposed to operate like you do at your home. And, you know, at max, you might have, even if you got 10 kids at your house, I'm going to put it to the extreme. We got thousands and all of the kids outnumber every adult in the building. You have to have rules. You don't get to just say one child can do, one can't, vice versa. Their code of conduct for a reason, and you're supposed to follow it. And then when a parent, I mean, a teacher doesn't follow it, then you guys are calling, oh, he don't have classroom management. That's his fault. How did he let that happen? Because we've also seen clips of fights in classrooms, and then they yep. blame the teacher. Well, where was the structure? Mm -hmm. Why didn't the teacher stop it? So you can't have it both ways. You either want us to maintain the house, which we will, because, again, you're going to have rules. No different from an adult at their job. Like, y'all don't have rules. You know, my favorite line as a counselor to students are, listen, as an adult, we don't get to do what we want to do. We do what we have to do. Yeah. Right. We follow the most rules. OK. As an adult, <laughs> my phone is my phone. But if my boss say I can't use my phone, I can't use it there. But yet we will take up for a child who says it's not your phone. I don't want to give it to the teacher because it's not your phone. I give up my phone at a job. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we think that the kids can just do what they want to do, and I get it, they're your kids. There's two things you don't mess with people, money and their child, because they act a fool. And so I understand that from a parent that you, you want things for your kids, but your kids are not allowed to do what you allow them to do at the house. And so for the girl who did the dance, like you said, I, I saw when the lady put the thing back in the basket, the mm -hmm. diploma, and then she shooed the girl off, the one who did the gritty, like, uh-uh, go we'll sit down. Mm -hmm. Like, I saw that. Now, to me, at that moment, it was a bit much because she already did it now. And now you're going to look crazy because you kept the diploma back. So just for the sake of the ceremony and being uniform, had that been me, I probably would have gave it to her, maybe held her after to have a conversation. I don't know mm -hmm. what I would have done in that moment. I, like I said, they did it at our school and the kids were still given their covers. Now, on another tip, at our school, you don't get your diploma. You get a cover and ain't nothing in it. right? <laughs> so they get to say, I'm not giving it to you. So all yeah. you walk off with is this empty thing. Now, theirs were rolled up in a traditional diploma way with a little ribbon on it. Yeah. So I don't know if that was the actual diploma or if that was just pieces of paper as just like, okay, we're going to hand them something or not. Um, that's the other thing. You also mentioned the small clip. So we don't know who did it before, what her reaction was. I think those kids know what they're doing. You did that again because you wanted to. You wanted to create a viral moment. You did that. You yep. got exactly what you wanted. You wanted a moment and it went on. I just think that we got to, we as in the public sometimes got to hold our opinion, especially about things that we don't quite understand. But if we don't create a culture where we're expecting our kids to follow the rules and regulations of adults, we're going to have a hot mess on our hands, um, yep. you know. In, in the future, because these are the kids that are going to be going into jobs. They're not going to follow anybody's Ooh. rules if you're telling them that you don't want them to follow the rules of the school. How do you expect your job, your child to be a productive adult if you're already teaching them that you don't have to do what people tell you to do? Listen. Like, that's the total opposite of what we do as adults. I just think it's irresponsible to, to have your child to think that it's no, it, there's no consequences to the things that they do. Yo, all right, listen. You just... This is from the Philadelphia Inquirer. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the story is there. Mm -hmm. Dana Carter 
was a part of the Girls High alumni who led the 2023 gra graduates into the ceremony. The educator and member of the Racial Justice Organization Coalition often speaks for marginalized students, but in this case, she said the traditions are important and she believes the administrators did not err, E-R-R. -R. I think that's how you pronounce that. They quote her by saying, I'm definitely about the rules and regulations and following the guidelines that have been set forth by the authorities that were in charge, Carter said. And though she personally would not have embarrassed, I can't pronounce it, Abdul, Rahman, and Birch, who are the two, are the two girls, Carter said, sticking to consequences is key. I'm so sorry that child had a rough year, Carter said, but this is the school she picked. We've got to stop giving our babies out. When we don't hold them to standards or hold them accountable for what they do, then they will continue to do whatever they want out in the streets. Hello. And I know that was not easy for her to say. And here's the thing, y'all. Again, we're not demonizing or talking bad about these kids. They're still, I mean, they're 17, 18 year olds, by the way. But they're still kids, you know what I'm saying? They owe the kids going into the, you know, college or whatever they're going to do next. And they didn't do anything crazy, wild, vulgar, or vain. It was just, this is not supposed to be done here. And you knew that. And you, cho you chose to do this. You made a choice. And, you know, every ed educator, myself, it is so heartbreaking when you have a child who's been great all year, did all their homework never gave you a problem and that one time maybe it's the movie day or whatever and you say hey here are the rules and you that child does it that day that child you ain't had to talk to all year you want to let them slide you do but the kid who's behind you been busting all year is watching you the second you let that kid who is more or well behaved slide you're sending a message mm -hmm. oh you playing favorites oh you biased Here's another thing, because you mentioned the job job world. Let's take it back to the real world. In the workplace, when they put rules and standards in place, if they don't enforce them across the board, let's say they let you slide and somebody else does it and they get in trouble, that company is sued for bias. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a real world thing. Like you have to it's it's worse. Like in education, there's some wiggle room sometimes. But in the work world, when you decide to violate a company policy, if they don't hold you accountable, they literally open themselves up to lawsuits. We see it all the time. Companies getting sued because they're like, oh, how are you going to enforce this on me, but not on them? The same thing happened over here. But you know what I'm saying? So, again, like what you said, we cannot have it both ways, y'all. We can't. And again, hindsight is 2020. Everybody mm -hmm. is saying, oh, I wouldn't have did this. I wouldn't have did that. All of us have done something we regret in the moment because it's in the moment. You're not expecting it. It's not like you have a prepared reaction. You know what I'm saying? And, and she reacted and, you know, right. it, it happened. I mean, and there's nothing we can do about it now, but I think I think some of the conversation around it is just there's a lot of misinformation. And again, people don't understand the other side we're so busy coddling and covering and protecting kids which we should but it's like hey consequences are real mm -hmm. <laughs> they're real um did you have anything else to say about the girls high graduation before we get to the next couple well i do want to soften the audience's hearts for us because i think we're coming across a little hard so let me say <laughs> this if you <laughs> we are in education which means we love kids i think that's the yes. misconception they think that when we are firm and stick stick to our guns, that we are being biased to their students, we're being mean. But we love kids, and like you said, sometimes it breaks our heart to see them put themselves in a situation. And I I always tell my parents this: when they're at the school, they're my kids, and that's how I treat them. Yep. I treat them like they're my kids. We don't do anything to those kids that you know that we wouldn't you know do with our kids, and that we hold them accountable. That's 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 it. It's not that we are you know, singling kids out. And I'm not saying that that never happens, but the majority of the people in education are there because they love kids and they only want the best. And those moments are not just exciting for the students. My first graduation, I cried, okay? Boo-hoo cried because those are my kids I have for four years. Aww. And it's like, oh my God, my kids are leaving. Yeah. You know, you build bonds with them, but also you want to see them succeed. And with that, you have to teach them those things. It's not just 
most schools mission is not just to educate them, but it's to prepare them for the real world. Everybody got that line somewhere in some shape, fashion or form in their mission statement of the school. So you send them to the school and you want us to teach them math, science, social studies and English, but then you don't expect for us to teach for us to teach the quorum. You don't expect for us to teach them how to react and respond to uh, the rules, the policies and procedures, how to hold themselves accountable. Like you want those soft skills out in the world. Well, they get taught that sometimes mm -hmm. in the school system. And where the expectation is that we we teach them to follow that. The, the way they behave in the classroom is no different than the expectation and what we expected at the graduation and even more so. So you guys complain about the whole like, oh, OK, they couldn't do the gritty. They couldn't wave. But they told you what you had to wear under that cap and gown, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They told you what color you had to wear. You adhered to that. They made you wear what they wanted you to wear for the grad. You adhered to all of those things. And the minute you, you don't want to adhere to, oh, they can't celebrate, it's a problem. Because we don't just have rules that you can't celebrate. You know how many rules it is at the graduation? <laughs> so like many. Our kids can't decorate their hats. OK, they have to. The girls got to wear dresses. And we've had debates with girls who want to wear pants, obviously, because that's the thing. But they want it to be uniform. I know schools in South Carolina that don't wear cap and gowns. They wear sundresses and, and seersucker suits down in the low country, you know, at some <laughs> private schools, you know, yeah. they look bougie with it. You know, um, it's it's going to be rules. And at the end of the day, you have school choice. So if you don't like True. the rules. And the way a school handles and deals with things, then you can, they're online schools, they're homeschool associations you can set your kids up for. But God, somebody, if you're going to send them to school, they got to follow the rules. It just is what it is. Yeah. Uh, One thousand percent. You got to follow the rules in the school, y'all, whether you like it or not. And if you don't like it, advocate for change. Do the proper channels. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> they need to come to those school board meetings. They need Hello. to also come to the school improvement council meetings. Hello. I don't ever see parents in that. You know, they blast us on social media. But when we have those meetings for them to say, what would you like to see? What well, Volunteer, because trust me, we could use a lot of help. And then you can bring those yes. suggestions and ideas there. But you can't be a part of the problem and then don't even offer solutions. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is the solution to that? Like you just offer something. That's unrealistic to think that the school is going to let them, you know, say something for 10, I mean, do they little dance or whatever, 10 seconds. Yes. A school of 600 graduates. There are schools who have to do graduations in like three days because they have so many different <laughs> students. Yep. Let me tell you from the announcer's perspective, when I was calling out names and the parents were screaming so loud, you got to think those things are going like quickly, the names, because you're trying to get out of there. I promise you, I couldn't hear myself over the parents' cheers. So therefore, if I couldn't hear me, that second child that came behind the parent with the bullhorn and the bell couldn't hear their child's name. Yep. So how fair is that for you to scream for the because the child's up there dancing and now everybody's laughing and cheering that we had a guy that took his dance to the floor, like where the kids were sitting. And now everybody was still cheering and laughing and yelling at this one kid. I had called like five names and I promise you, because I can't stop the show because stop. the kids are doing that. So now those parents didn't get a chance to hear their kid's name because everybody was still yelling and cheering. So how fair, who's going to advocate for that mama and that child mm -hmm. who didn't get their two, their two minutes of shine because somebody else's child was acting a fool? See, we don't think about that because if that were your child instead of the dancing child, you would have been real pissed. Yeah. You would have been on the news saying this child acted a fool and my child's name wasn't called. I couldn't hear it. I didn't know if they called them. Yep. I missed the moment because of the chaos on the floor. It's a it's a catch twenty twenty on both ends, but if everybody does what they're supposed to do, then things will go accordingly. Exactly, exactly, y'all. It, it it's really it's really that simple. Quick quick touch. Saw the same thing in college. Uh, a Q coming across the stage. He got his degree. He started hopping like he's literally like maybe half a foot away from the lady that gave the degree, and she kind of like was like, "Hey, you need to get off the stage." Meanwhile, the announcer called the next person's name. You're standing where he needs to be standing to get his degree, his moment. You hop in, then you bumped into the lady. Now people are like, oh, she extra. Why she react like that? I'm like, yo, get to let him celebrate. I'm like, yo, y'all missing the fact that, okay, yeah, y'all saying, oh, that's his moment. Let him have his moment. The the there's someone right behind him whose name was called, whose family came to see him through whatever his struggle was to get through college. You just stomped on his moment because now you stand here too long and his name wasn't heard. 
You know what I'm saying? And college is a different level. College is tough, oh, yeah. expensive, yada, yada, yada. Like, I know yeah. I graduated a year late, a year and a semester late, matter of fact, because I went through some stuff. So I went yeah. up, got my stuff. In- <laughs> I did, man. So it's like, again, you can't have it both ways. Dang, I lost my train. Oh, you have plenty of time, y'all. This is my other thing. Before... And after the graduation, you have all the time in the world. Me and the bros were out there shimmying, taking pics. We did it <laughs> all. We walked in there. We did what we were supposed to do. When we got outside, we did it all again. Like, it <laughs> it don't have to be on the stage in front of all these people I don't know. Like, my classmates that I'm graduating with, I just spent four years with you. Well, five and a half, five and a quarter, whatever. <laughs> I just, y'all already know me. Like, they're, you know what I'm saying? We made it. We've already had our struggle talks and our laughs and giggles. Let's get through this ceremony. Um, oh, so, okay. Yeah, but, you know, everybody has their cookouts and, and, and dinners after anyway. Yes. They already have their moment to celebrate. It's not like the families don't plan something afterwards. So to be like, oh, they need it. They earned it. They were going to get those celebrations. Some kids walk out to a car. Some go immediately out to eat. Some have big old extravagant, like almost wedding-like parties yep. for graduation. So it's not like that moment won't happen, but it's your job as a parent to make that moment. You don't take away from everybody in in trying to get that moment in that time. And I agree, college, yeah, it's a little different in that you spent a lot of money. It's a different type of, but I still agree with graduation being a dignified event and those things are not for the stage. And it's just, again, you know what it is. You always have those attention the attention seeking people who always yep. are going to, you know, ha, ah, look at me, you know, push the buttons and and do all of that. The problem is it only takes one person for then the other people to feel like they're going to uh, copy it. And you mentioned the the, the cue hopping of whoever mm. it was, but yep. you know, it was one that did that and they tore their ACL on stage doing it. Do you yep. remember? That's the one. I was, that that's what I was going to say. That was the next one I was going to go to. Right. My <laughs> stomach curl. I hate seeing horrific injuries. Yeah. First of all, don't hop in dress shoes. They're slick. Right. <laughs> but that's not what you're supposed to be doing. And your a- an ACL injury is serious, y'all. Like you, some people don't walk the same after that. So yeah. now, but not to paint it in a in a negative light. But again, now that's everyone's focus. This mm-hmm. dude just got up here, hopped, tore his ACL. We watching him limp off the stage. But there's there's people behind him waiting to cross this stage but now people thinking about you because you want to do this and i hate that that happened to him like that but that's your graduation memory now because right you want to be extra yeah everybody's that one time at graduation when that boy tore his acl oh that john looked like i know that john hurt he hobbled off that stage okay y'all so (laughs) listen (laughs) i don't know what's going on this happened this this was today today it was today as we're recording (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you know dang, I think people are going to kill us for this uh, there is another graduation college graduation now the clip showed a black young lady snatching the microphone from a white professor highly aggressively snatching the mic, mic from her and said you didn't let me get my moment my name is such and such and I am graduating today I think she might have said something else. It wasn't very long, and she threw the mic down and walked off. And people were calling, again, the white lady racist, you this, you that, you won't let black people shine, yada, yada, yada. Do those things happen? Yes. But number one, you could tell from that clip that that wasn't the whole video. So we don't really know what happened. But she said what the girl said. She did an explanation video on TikTok saying she was not finished saying her name because the students each had to say their own name. And she said she was not finished saying her name and the lady took her mic. And she also said that she has a long name. She said her name has three syllables. I know. Uh, (laughs) I can't judge. My daughter's first name has three syllables. No, but here's the thing. When she said, because she said her name after she took the mic. And in my head, I'm like, yo, your name is not long. Like, no, it wasn't. It was not long. It was like. I mean, my name is Robert Wilson Jr. I think my name might be longer than hers, honestly. So, I mean, me personally, I want to see the whole video because I'm like, mm, if that lady snatched your mic, I feel like you might have been trying to be extra, but I don't know. But that happened. And again, there was a lot of back and forth on this one, too, which was interesting. A lot of people were saying they didn't like her reaction. 
like to snatching the mic and, and the saying what she said. Some people felt she was justified. So again, we got two sides of the coin. What what were your thoughts? With <laughs> <laughs> that one was when you when I found out about that, I was just like, yo, that is so crazy. I have never seen anybody act like that. I think that number one, that was a bit aggressive. I don't think that that approach should have been taken. However, it's hard for us to figure out because we didn't see the moment where the lady was taking mics away from people. And to be fair, if somebody recorded that clip because it was so outrageous. Why wouldn't someone have recorded this lady aggress- uh, taking or snatching mics too early for black people? Because that's what the girl implied when she did her mm-hmm. reply or video was that she was snatching the mic early for all black students. I am going to say if that did happen, somebody would have recognized it and it would have videotaped it at that moment. But for me, I don't know if you peep game on this, but it was the lady who was recording the video for me that took me all the way out. Okay. She's just like, that's right, girl. You're going to get your, that's right. And she was like egging it on. And I was just like, no, lady, it's not the time. And see what people don't realize, those things hurt you in the end. Like they're not from, we talking old school, new school in the beginning. If we act the fool, there would have been no evidence, okay? Mm-hmm. At this moment, you act the fool, and that's how you behave. I don't want you on my job. What I don't want is the minute that something goes wrong and you don't like what, what somebody does to you, that you're going to behave in that extreme measure. You will not represent me or my organization with that type of behavior. That's true. That's just it. We don't see it past the moment. You got to look past the moment, and that's what we educators try to teach kids. You can't just react in the moment. You just graduated from college and you mean to tell me you don't know how to hold your composure? You yeah. don't know how to behave professionally? That's not that's not correct. Now, I'm not saying that lady shouldn't have been called out if that's what she was doing, yeah. but how do we know that? We don't know. <laughs> We're taking this lady's word for that. We don't know that that happened. I think she overreacted in that case. I do think so. And I think if that lady did do that, it would have been nothing wrong with her addressing that lady afterwards, being like, yo, that was really messed up the way that you did us. I err on the side of what you said. I think she was at the mic and you were supposed to say your name like Yolanda, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm. I got a long name too. I won't say all. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really long, but mm. you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But if I was up there, yeah, my name is Yolanda, Chanel, and you know, I'm taking my time breathing in it. She didn't say you're supposed to say hello, my name is. Yeah. You know, you were just supposed to say your first, your middle, your last name and keep moving. We really just don't know. And I always say you cannot jump to conclusions when you don't have the full story. It's like reading, it's like taking the title of the book and writing a book report on it. Yeah. How do you know what happened if you never opened the darn book? <laughs> Or even if you read the first page, you can't do a book report. You don't know the full story, but we do that. We'll write a whole goddamn dissertation on what we thought of this particular clip that was yep. like five minutes. And then we get shame in the end when the facts come out. <laughs> now, I know this is probably not on your agenda to talk about, but remember when that, um, I want to say it was a FAMU student. It wasn't graduation, but she had took those risky pictures in front of the um, statue on campus. Remember she was like naked or something or half naked and they yeah. held her diploma? Yeah. Or yeah. degree. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like those same those same things. People keep doing this. It's not like these type of things happen haven't happened before. Like you don't get the the picture of what schools are doing. Yet we still keep pushing the button. We still keep pushing the envelope. We just keep doing it. Now if this lady at this school from the girl who just grabbed the mic says, "Okay, well we're not gonna give you your because she didn't look like she had a, a degree in her hand." Mm-hmm. So now if like when I was in college, you had to go to another building to get your um, absolutely. Degree. It wasn't nothing in cover. You had to go or either they would mail it later. So what if she didn't get it and the school decides we're going to keep it? Because like I told y'all, you just don't know the policy. Schools, well, I know my school, you have to pay for those certificates. You, The school pays to have them printed for every student. So if I decide I ain't giving you the certificate I paid for, then I decided I'm not going to give it to you. That does not take away from the fact that you earned the degree, because again, your transcript will solidify that. Yep. So yes, you can go to grad school, you go into a job and they want to verify, they're going to go to a third party site. They're going to say, hey, the company, I want to request a transcript for this student. And that company will then send that transcript because they work on the behalf of that university or college. So again, that wall art is, <laughs> is got everybody in this frenzy. And me as the person who got to order the diplomas at <laughs> knowing the process, I'm just like, you guys mean to tell me y'all get y'all panties in a bunch about a certificate that the company who makes graduation rings and who made the cap and gown and who delivered it is printing these things off the cheap for like 67 cents a pop. Mm-hmm. Y'all letting this get your panties in yeah. a bunch? It's, 
it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. I just think follow the rules. None of this will happen, number one. But number two, if you go on act the fool, you got to deal with the consequences. Yes. And now if you somebody like me, since I know the rules, right? I know the backstory. I'm going to act a fool and then I'm going to just order myself like <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. No, like, but that's the thing. You know, we talk about I'm going to keep the same energy. Keeping the same energy has consequences. It mm-hmm. does. Like you said, like people saw that come. You graduating. Like that's what you're known for now. And now also that school is associated. You're associated with that school. So now that school sees that. And here's the thing. Here's, here's the, the bigger issue. Again, like you said, we only see what you did. We never saw what the other person did. So like. It's irresponsible to jump to those types of conclusions just because the lady was white. Does racism is, exist? Absolutely. Have we seen acts of racism? Absolutely. Was there enough in that video or any of the videos that we've seen to conclude that racism occurred in those moments? Absolutely not. There isn't. There's not enough evidence to show that this was racist. Was it wrong? Was it inappropriate? Could you not like it? Sure, but like we're stamping and slapping labels on situations where we don't know the whole story. And like you said, how many times have people done or said things and then later, I'm sorry, y'all. That's not what really <laughs> happened. And we look stupid. You on the, you keyboard warriors I hear defending people. Now, again, not condemning any of these people who went through these things. I'm just like, the point is, you're responsible for your actions. Mm-hmm. Like, period. Whether you're in the right whether you're in the wrong, you're responsible for the actions that you take. And again, I hated to see that because, again, you're at a graduation. There's people behind you waiting for their turn, just like you waited for your turn and you go and you do all of these things. So I guess we'll see the conclusion of the video. I think someone has the whole video out there. Mm-hmm. I do want to see coming. the whole video because... I'm sorry, y'all. I got to call a spade a spade. The math wasn't mathing. Shorty, unless you got like four names that you didn't say, you said your name after you took the mic. Your name was not mad long. And I didn't see her snatch the mic from you. So I don't I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's, it's bad all around. And I, I'll just say this like to the younger generation, because again, huge generational divide. Again, one, you got to accept responsibility for your actions. But two, if you don't like what an institution does or how an institution operates, you're talking about schools are old, y'all. Like, you're talking mm. about schools that go back to the early 1900s, some of the 1800s. They have old traditions that have been around for hundreds of years. I'm sorry, but you got to be part of the student government, go into these board mm-hmm. meetings and stuff like that. And you have to get everyone to rally behind you and say, hey, we, the students, who, you know, bring in income, who bring attention, who are bringing these grades and giving you great things to say about your institution because what we're doing in the world, these are changes we would like to see to these situations or these ceremonies. That's how you got to do it. Like, that, 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 I will say that's the proper channels. Yes, there have been instances in history where a black person or anybody will do something in a moment and it'll cause a revolutionary big old change. And those were way more serious situations, (laughs) way more serious situations than a graduation ceremony. So be prepared. Like if you're going to keep that same energy and you're going to have these reactions, be prepared for what comes along with it. Because just like the people I just spoke about, these activists, these people were shot at. These people's lives were threatened. These people were beat. These people got locked up. They went through some shiznit, okay, Mm -hmm. because they chose to stand up and make a difference. And that's something that comes along with it. So if you feel like that's what you're doing or that's what you're about to do, brace yourself. If you feel like that's the battle you're fighting and, you know, it's that serious to you, brace yourself because that comes along with it. The consequences to your actions are going to come along with you know, the action. So right. keep that in mind. But but I just want to see us. And again, people probably thinking all kinds of stuff about us right now, because <laughs> again, this is from an educator's perspective. This is something we do oh, yeah. every day that right. you don't know about. You it's don't believe us. Be different. 
It's yeah. going to be different from the net of regular world, our opinion. And you know what I like to say is, like you said about the consequences, you get to do what you want to do if that's the stance you want to take, but you don't get to control how other people or entities or companies respond to that. Yep. So when you were talking about the people protesting, guess what? They understood that if I do this, there's a chance I'm going to get beat up. There's a chance I'm going to go to jail. They did that with that understanding. They didn't complain about it afterwards because they knew what the consequences were and they accepted it. It's like when you go to a um, a goddamn um, trampoline park, and you sign the waiver saying, "If you hurt your ankle, it is what it is." You sign that paper <laughs> knowing what the, what the consequences could be, but you signed it and go in there. You can't sue afterwards because you didn't sign the paper. Yep. But ultimately, what I want to say to like, the young generations, as, as you stated, just a message to them: you don't have to go through something to learn from it. These situations is what happened. You and I just talked about three or four different situations. So because you know that school can hold your diploma if you do not follow the rules then just follow the rules you don't have to be a news uh you know a news a uh, clickbait mm -hmm. next time this graduation season come around unless you absolutely want to because let's be honest some people do it because they want that smoke yeah you know they want they like they like drama and beef and they want to be a part of that because right now we know that that's possible we know a school can do that and there are some superintendents and some school boards that will uphold whatever that school decides to do or uh, either the college organization, like there are people that will uphold that. So because you know that, learn from these experiences of these people that have gone through it prior to you. And ultimately across everything, we're talking about high school and college, but uh, we have laws we have to abide by. There are rules that are, are just, that govern our life in general. And the expectation is that we adhere to them and we don't have to, but if we don't, again, consequences are there to slap us in the face. This is the last thing I'm gonna say about this. <laughs> you keyboard warriors and parents that was throwing all this energy at graduation, put that same energy into the entire school year. Oh, preach. When these teachers are struggling to get pencils, paper, notebooks, erasers, paying for your kid's field trip, like, teachers needs, like, ugh, I don't know what happened. Like, when I was growing up, parents, I saw parents in my school all the time at events. Like, we never wanted for anything when I was growing up in school. I mean, my mom and dad made sure I had stuff, too. But, like, parents were heavily involved. And as someone who taught for 10 years, the drop-off is redonkulous. I could have a class of 30 kids. And I'm if I'm lucky, I'll have six highly active parents all year. The, the rest, I might hear from every now and again. And that's it. The rest is just like, and me and my aunt, we're, we're going to write a book. <clears throat> I'm not going to give too much, but <laughs> it started out like this. Imagine taking your child to a building that you've never been to for, been to before and dropping them off with a complete stranger that you've never met. That's what some of y'all do or someone you met once. You, this person going to spend more, more time with your child than you will during the school year. And you don't even want to get to know them. You have no vested interest in what happens all day. It's crazy. Beyond. It's crazy. So you and the same. You have six people at, at the at the school for um parent teacher conference night, but it, the graduation there is packed to the max. Packed. Packed. Y'all packed can't even meet max. virtually. <laughs> I I ain't even gonna get. I I I ain't even gonna. I ain't gonna go there, but yeah, you gonna uh, get our pressure up tonight. That's for real, about. but not nah, dead, dead ass, y'all. Like for real, for the parents out there, like seriously, like it makes your involvement changes the entire culture of the school, and Absolutely. it changes. And we love it. That's yes. what they don't get. We embrace that. We want it. Yes, we we started having the last school outside that we started having behavior issues in the hallway, and we started asking parents to volunteer to be hall monitors because, like you said, it's only a couple of us. We started having some dads, black dads too, black dads, moms and stuff like that. Every day I got to know them and they said, man, I don't know how you do it. Like mm -hmm. the language these kids use, the disrespect. Ooh. Ooh. But I said, I know y'all see it and I know y'all hear it. But I said, let me tell you something you might not have observed. I was like, since y'all been here, the traffic in the hallway is lower. The kids are cutting class less. Their behavior has shifted and changed because we're there to hold them accountable. And also... You know, someone also told me, you know, hey, my relationship with my child has gotten better. Like they love seeing I get and I feel good because I'm seeing my child. I get to peek into their classroom. I get to hug them in between classes like and they feel supported mm -hmm. and they, they may only come for an hour. 
They ain't got to come all day. They might come for an hour. They might come for 30 minutes. But, like, it can literally shift the school culture. But y'all want to spend $50,000 on prom. <clears throat> yeah. Protect your child. Protect your child. They're children. <laughs> they doing it for the gram. Protect your child. Like you said, the child, the girl that took the pictures at uh by the school fountain or whatever, Risque. You remember yeah. the high school student? She was posted with guns and lost all of her scholarship offers. Oh, yeah. They, they have to be careful with that. Like you said, that happens and it is what it is. And Boy, you struck a nerve with that prom thing, but you're right. That's the yeah. I struck a I nerve. Too, look, I too am over prom, so you know I got. I see a lot. Today. I see a lot. Um, and it's a lot. It was a lot to handle. It's a Yo, lot to prom. Be lo- I ain't even go to prom because I couldn't take the girl that I wanted. Uh, but, but I mean, she grew up to be uh, gay, so. That, that makes a lot of sense now. That's a whole other story. That's, That's a whole I mean, topic that, yeah. from my experience. Yeah, right? I was like, uh, that now all those pursuits I tried to make of you make sense. You never wanted me in the first place. You never wanted a man. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. That, that's wild, but we're going to let y'all get out of here. Yolanda, thank you so much for joining me. This was a great conversation. I cannot wait I to see the comments. Time. I had a great time. I promise you. And you know what? You brought my pressure down because this little topic had me steaming for a little minute. So I'm glad I'm able to get it out and was able to talk about it with someone that can relate and understand. You know, my yes. husband's in education too. So we've talked about it, but I like talking about it on the platform so that people can hear it and, and from our perspective because it is a different one. It's a very different perspective, y'all. We're going to get up out of here. Yolanda, where can they follow you and find you at on Instagram? Sure. It is at Frank Factualities, and that is Instagram. That's also Facebook, and that is also where else am I? Um, it's F Factualities on Twitter, and yeah, that's it. Oh, Twitter! I ain't used that since '88. Uh, you know, I have it because people have it, but I, you know, I glance at it. I upload <laughs> a little, you know. But Instagram is my favorite, so it's at Frank Factualities. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us once again. Y'all know you can follow us, FME underscore podcast on everything. Uh, Yeah, man, just go out there and be responsible and remember that there are consequences for your actions. And if you don't like something, if you don't like the way things are done, go through the proper channels to advocate for change. Now, if that's not working, then you can take it to the next level, man. But, you know, hey. We got to hold one another accountable and educators got to reinforce the rules, yo. I'm sorry. Like, that's... I'm not sorry, actually. That's just the way it is, you know? It, it's it, That's just real. But I, I, I'll start another rant. Until next time, take care of yourselves physically, 